Eric Sartori lost 30 pounds in 90 days doing his style of intermittent fasting called Eat, Deplete, Repeat. Well, thank you, Eric, for uh, being here. Uh, why don't you give everybody a little introduction to yourself? Like, who are you and what do you do? All right. Um, my name is Eric. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for six years. And um, I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I work in Scottsdale, Arizona. I have three kids, uh, which that was kind of the downfall. That's when I started gaining weight. But yeah, so I, I'm a nurse. I'm a dad. I'm yeah. So give us a little rundown of how you're finding success with weight loss. Like how long has it taken you? Like how much have you gotten off so far and, and that kind of thing? Okay. Uh, so starting in March 2017, uh, I was using uh, an appetite correction uh, way of eating. So I had an appetite correction eating schedule. Uh, I read a lot of Dr. Bert Herring's work. He wrote the book Power of Appetite Correction. And um, that gave me pretty good results. I mean, at the time, my A1C was high before I started, so I was pre-diabetic. And using that method, I was able to get my numbers back to normal. And uh, that's the thing that really scared me because I had family members who, you know, diabetes, diabetes took their life, took limbs first, and then they're like, but um, for about a year, I was kind of working on that, and I got stuck. I had lost... I had gone from 233 down to maybe 205 at the lowest, but then I would always kind of creep back up to about 215. Mm -hmm. Still happy as heck with my results. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The fact that I wasn't continuing to get bigger was <laughs> so happy. I was so happy about that. Um, and then, uh, and then because I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, I've just been kind of paying attention to the science. Every time there's a question, I just like I'm chasing that question down the rabbit hole and looking at the research and all this stuff. And so um, on August 12th of this year, I started a practice that I kind of developed um, using a little bit of ketogenic science and a little bit of intermittent fasting science. Mm -hmm. And at that point I had started, I was at 220. Mm -hmm. And now I've gotten myself down as low as 188. Wow. And I've actually stopped doing it. I'm trying mm -hmm. to do more intuitive eating. Mm -hmm. And because of what I've learned from that method, I'm actually able to kind of keep myself balanced. I kind of settled in around 195. Mm -hmm. So, and on, uh, on my YouTube channel, the thing that I'm going to do when I actually hit my goal, which is going to be 183. Uh, mm -hmm. Once I get down there, I'm going to shave the beard. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. How long a, have you had the beard? There, <laughs> I've had the beard since I started gaining weight. Oh. I, I tell people it's, uh, this beard is the shame beard. It's the beard uh. that I grew. <laughs> I'll be honest. You know, we all do things. We, you know, we're, we try to stay at the back of the pictures, you know, when there's the group gathering so we don't have to see ourselves. Uh, we can just kind of peek up and, you know, all you see is our face, right? <laughs> you wear black, you stay away from stripes, you know, things like that. I grew the beard because my, I felt like my face was getting chubby and I didn't like the way it looked. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what is your daily routine? You said you've kind of gone over from, to, to kind of more of an intuitive thing. So what does that look like for you? Well, for 90 days, what I did was I would eat a meal. I call it eat, deplete, repeat. So I'd eat a meal, then I would deplete all of my glycogen. And as a nurse, I kind of understand a little bit about how metabolism works. Once you deplete your glycogen, um, which is basically your stored carbo carbohydrate, mm -hmm. your body switches into fat burning mode. And even though there's some fat burning happening all the time, pretty much, uh, at, there's, at a, there's a point at which your body starts making ketones. And so... Mm -hmm. I would wait until I had a positive ketone test and I wouldn't eat again until I had a positive ketone test. Oh, okay. So that ensured that no matter what I did with my last meal, I was ensuring a little bit of fat burning. Right. And so I did that for 90 days, lost 30 pounds and almost 17 inches. I took my before and after. So if you go like your neck, your chest, your waist, your hips, your arms, 
your legs and your calves. And if you, if I added up all of those measurements from before and after, it was like almost 17 inches. That's awesome. So, um, yeah. so but, but now I'm sorry, to, but now well, what I, what I'm doing is I'm taking, when I did the eat, deplete, repeat, mm -hmm. I could see what was happening. What mm -hmm. were the things that made my depletion time longer? Right. Like the chips and salsa. Chips and salsa, for some reason, make my depletion time so much longer. So right. I decided I'm going to trade chips and salsa for olives. Mm -hmm. And when I did that. My depletion time was so much shorter. So then I was eating every day. I was in ketosis every day by sometimes noon, sometimes three or four, sometimes six. Mm -hmm. But at least I was moderating it so that I, I was eating every day. So what I learned from, I call it the total depletion time. So I would monitor after my meal, uh, depending on how much activity I did, either walking um, or go for a jog or do a HIIT workout at home, I could see how my food choices and my activity choices affected what I call the total depletion time. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much in those 90 days about the choices I make and how they affect that time that mm -hmm. now I'm eating more intuitively. I'm just mm -hmm. making choices based off of what I remember from what I learned from that time. And it's, and it's good. You know, sometimes I actually have like a little, you know, eggs and green chilies in the morning, even though that's like out of my, what my normal fasting routine would have been. And I'm right. just kind of seeing how stuff like that works. Just a lot of self-experimentation. That's awesome. Did what was the longest depletion time? If you do, you, do you can you remember that? Like how? Oh, yeah. how? yeah, my longest depletion time was forty-two hours, and it was my first one. Oh, so I, yeah, I actually just for the sake of the experiment, took um, about two three weeks to not do any intermittent fasting, um, mm -hmm. so that I would be starting from kind of like a glycogen saturated state. Right. And yeah, 42 hours, I was in ketosis. The next cycle after that took 22 hours. The next cycle, 21. The next cycle after that was 19. And that's mm -hmm. the time when I started feeling a little overconfident. And that's when the chips and salsa incident happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so. And, yeah. how, and how long did it take for the chips and salsa? 36 hours. 36 Oh, that is fascinating. Yeah. But, you know, I put that in the context of what I, the other things I was doing. So that mm -hmm. was a little bit later meal. Mm -hmm. And um, I started eating the chips and salsa before I started making my dinner, ah. <laughs> my, my supper. And then I continued eating them, you know, with my supper. And then <laughs> after supper, I had a little more. And then I put the kids to bed. And because it's my favorite salsa, it's called Takupeto. Um mm -hmm. They, they sell it in a number of places down here. If you like salsa, oh. I highly recommend finding it. They have it at Whole Foods in Scottsdale. Okay. Um, it's so good. So I didn't want it to go to waste. So I finished it up with the chips. And the last chip went down the hatch at like 11 o'clock at night. So it was probably about a good six, seven hour eating window. Right, right. And, Got it. and the bag of chips was much lighter at the end of the night. <laughs> right. Yeah. Much lighter. So all of that was in me. <laughs> yeah. So has weight always been a struggle for you, would you say? Or is this something that happened like in adulthood? Mostly in adulthood. I've always been a very active person. Uh, high school, I was in sports every season. Um, outside of high school, went to college, found beer, drank a little bit, gained the freshman 15. It might have been 20 for me. and mm -hmm. uh, But I was able to lose that so easily. I just, you know... You know, every summer I'd come home and run and I'd be good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, pretty much was able to maintain myself fairly well until uh, in uh, 2008, had my first daughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember at about the two year mark, she was two years old. And I remember looking at myself thinking, I feel fat and depressed. Oh, yeah. Like, I just felt like, oh, I just feel chunky and fluffy and depressed so i got to do something about it and it was around that time i i went back to my old method which, which was running mm -hmm. but something in the air in arizona actually everything in the air in arizona i'm allergic to i found oh, out okay. through 
for allergy testing. Oh. So <laughs> I couldn't run. I found myself running and I was using the, uh, the Maffetone method of mm-hmm. like tracking your heart rate and uh, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, why is my heart rate still higher, but I'm going slower? Mm, mm, yeah. You know, I, so I, I have this scientific type of mind. I mean, I'm not doing real science here. I'm just studying myself, but I'm like, that should not be happening. I am training on a regular basis. I've mm-hmm. got my heart in the target heart rate. I should be going further and further distances because I should be gaining that cardiovascular health. Right. It was going backwards. So I got allergy testing, found out massive allergies. And oh, so man. I just had to find something that I could rely on sitting mm-hmm. at home, changing diapers, giving my kids bottles and staying away from all the toxic stuff that was making my lungs flare up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's where the, the different methods of intermittent fasting come in. Right. So was there a particular moment where you just said enough, like I have got to get this weight off or was it, it was just like a, you know, you just kind of came to it gradually. Uh, at first it was, I just don't, feel as good. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't a big thing. The thing that really got me, uh, I had started working as a nurse. I made a career change. I used to be an electrician and now I'm a a registered nurse. I work in the, I was working in the heart department Mm -hmm. and so everybody was checking their blood pressure. And I said, Hey, yeah, slap it on me. Let's, Let's see, you know, uh, and my systolic was 162 and my diastolic was 103. Whoa. Now, <laughs> if you look at if you look at the like order sets, like the kind of like standing orders or, or like the the unit routine kind of mm. expectation is mm-hmm. if you have a patient whose systolic is above 160 or diastolic is above 100, you're supposed to call the doctor and get treatment. Uh, yeah. So I thought, oh, yeah, that's my sign. I'm, I'm going to become my own patient here. You know, I'm heading down the road and I had recently at that point been diagnosed pre-diabetic, but even that I thought I can fix this. I'll just stay away from the sweets. But those two things together made me realize if I keep this up, I'm going to end up on one of these surgeons tables and they're going to be cracking open my chest and re-plumbing my, my heart. And I don't want to bypass surgery. I don't even want a stent. I don't want to have any of that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what made me, you know, make this big change. Right. Well, is there, is there anything that you still struggle with or that's still a challenge? For, for me? Yeah. I love beer still ever Mm -hmm. since, you know, I found it back in the day. Um, So when I look at all this stuff that I'm trying to do as far as appetite correction wise, uh, I think those slippery liquids that just go down real easy and, and real quick and make you feel good. For me, that's the biggest challenge. Right. <laughs> um, but I'm determined to make to make this work in that environment where um, I think later, you know, once the kids are a little bit grown up, you know, I'll, I, I won't need the wine at the end of the day when all the kids crying and everything is stopped, you know, or the right. beer or whatever. But for now, it's it's kind of like helping me maintain my sanity. But right. that's, that's kind of a, a hard thing. You know, there's, there's those things that you don't want to give up. Initially it was pizza. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love pizza and I love beer. Those are both really two really carb heavy foods and they go down real easy for me. I can eat a whole pizza, a whole large oh, wow. pizza all by myself and not oh, wow. even feel full at the end. So my, my, you know, my fullness signals for some reason they're really quiet. They're real quiet. The hunger signals are real loud. Right. So, so that's my biggest thing is I'm always fighting those hunger signals and those, you know, I'm just, I just can't hear those satiety <laughs> signals, you know, they're just right. tiny little quiet little guys back in my, in my head, you know? Right. So. right. so do you feel like there's been something that's changed for you this go around with your weight loss? Like you did the, the appetite correction, then, you know, intermittent fasting. Do you feel like you've, you've learned something about yourself this go around and it's like changed you forever? Yeah. I think going through those cycles of watching my depletion time, um, definitely changed my perspective on intermittent fasting, 
um, from beforehand, where beforehand I was really not interested in counting calories. And I could have gotten a lot more scientific with it. I could have found, okay, well, I eat too many calories. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm plateaued. But I just, it just annoys the heck out of me. I tried it one time recently and I had bought some fresh figs and I looked up in my fitness pal and it was like a one and one half inch diameter fig is this many. So I pull out the tape measure and all my figs are inch and a quarter. I'm like, how much math do I have to do to count calories? This is driving me bonkers. Literally, absolutely bonkers. I just, I was like, forget this. I'm just eating the figs. <laughs> right, it takes all the enjoyment out of it, right? So this this thought of like intuitively. So I know that when I get my 10,000 steps a day in, mm. I deplete so much faster. Mm. And you know what? I am so impressed by your six miles of supper idea. It is so good. It is so, so good. As a heart nurse, you know, the American Heart Association recommends 10,000 steps a day. Mm-hmm. How many steps is your six miles? Do you know? Do you 14,000. Know? 14, Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, there are times when I was getting 14,000, 20,000. The more I do, the faster I deplete. And it's just so awesome. Yeah. What I learned in monitoring my total depletion time, it just showed me, I mean, on a ba- very basic level, that if I eat fewer carbs, if I get whole food mm-hmm. um, in me, so I liked um, the the lower. I, I just say I go lower carb on the whole whole spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So instead of maybe uh, bananas and apples and pears, I was eating blackberries and raspberries and strawberries. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as like fruits go, I or you know other things go, maybe more avocados more macadamia nuts and so instead of snacking on um potato chips and tortilla chips and you know i as much as i love uh things like pitas and hummus i know that i need to instead of making a whole plate of pitas and hummus i do maybe half a plate of olives with those right and so i i just learned to kind of do that and yeah. Watching that total depletion time made a huge difference for me, just because I feel like maybe I'm too ADD to keep track of other stuff very well. (laughs) This just made it simple. It made it simple. Am I in ketosis or no? So what's one piece of advice you'd give someone else? They're on their weight loss journey right now. What would you tell them? I would tell them, don't give up. There is a different method for each person. So your method is mostly going to be successful based on your personality. Mm-hmm. There are so many experts out there saying, no, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. I totally say absolutely not. Your personality is really what's going to make the difference. If you find a method that works with your personality and with your lifestyle, boom, there you go. Do it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Yeah. So, and keep searching and keep using uh, different methods and try to think outside of the box. You know, I I feel like I invented something new, but Mm -hmm. you might also invent something new. Right. You know, if you're you're relentless in your pursuit to stay Mm -hmm. healthy. You know, maybe it's just because I'm at the hospital and I see so many people dying of, of all the things, or at least they're even traumas are complicated by metabolic syndrome. You know, people come in, you know, obese or coronary artery disease and all these other things. They get hit right. by a car and they get in an accident. They may die, whereas somebody right. who's healthy won't. So maybe I'm just freaked out by what I see all the time that I'm like, I got to find, I got to get to the bottom of this, you know. Well, since you're a nurse, um, yeah. what has been kind of the reset or do you talk about this with your coworkers, other people in the medical community and kind of what is their opinion on it, if you don't mind sharing oh it's all over the gamut and i'm i'm the type of person somebody told me once i could talk a hungry dog off the back of a meat wagon <laughs> um, so <laughs> i took that as a compliment and what it what it's about is it's about um you know i we get a lot of angry patients and mm. Uh, sometimes, you know, or family members, because it's their it's their loved one's health care that's, you know, that's a problem. So I've learned to be persuasive. So when I talk to people about intermittent fasting, I already kind of know what buttons to not push because mm-hmm. people just don't understand it. I leave, you know, little hints here, little hints there. I don't try and pry. But 
you know, some people it's the standard, well, that's just horrible. That's just going to ruin your metabolism. Oh, it's going to ruin it right down. And I'm like, well, what I was doing was ruin my metabolism. I'm just going to try something (laughs) different for a while. And I just think that mentality makes sense. Okay, let's see. My old method, three meals a day, waking up in the morning, putting, you know, cream and sugar in my coffee, eating breakfast, having a snack and then lunch. And then, you know, somebody put donuts out. Got to eat one of those because they're there and then have dinner, you know, and then have a glass of wine or a beer at night. Yeah, that was ruining my metabolism. So, you know what? Anything other than that, totally right. open to it. Totally open right. to it. Right. Well, I guess within reason, right? But right. Um, yeah. And then I've had some people who are just like, hmm, that's cool. I think that's mm-hmm. really interesting. And I've led a number of my friends um, into, you know, just help them find it for themselves, you know, which intermittent fasting protocol is going to work best for them. And um, I've had a lot of friends come up and give me hugs. I've lost a lot of weight, you know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. One of my friends, her wife, um, she and her wife started doing it. Uh, she lost 60 pounds. Her wife lost over 100 pounds. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. It's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Eric, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you really wish I would have? Oh, man. I did think about this. Uh, do I still have more to go? How about that? Okay. Are my goals, have I finished my goals? No, I still have, I still have more weight to lose and I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I often struggle with the concept that I see on social media with guys who have ripped abs, Mm -hmm. um, you know, big muscles and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I, so I guess the question would be, is what was my ultimate goal? in this okay my ultimate goal has actually always been longevity Mm -hmm. okay because it started out with the high blood pressure and the pre-diabetes which are two um problems that that would actually shorten my life and i knew that um i can handle being a little fluffy Mm -hmm. okay i got i got enough personality to go you know to like you know deal with that you know Right. You think I'm fluffy? That's fine. I'll just get bigger pants. Who cares? But when it came down to longevity, that's 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 my ultimate goal is how do I help myself mm-hmm. in a world that's got everything going against me? You know, every commercial that you see is like snack more, feel better, you know, it's have great. all the beautiful foods in the world and yet be thin and beautiful. <laughs> right. You know? sure. Like have it all have it all you know it's like so how can we still live long in in this environment it's really an interesting environment that we live in you know our ancestors didn't have right snack snack bars and refrigerators and food at their disposal every moment you know they had to work for it you know right right so uh eric if people would like to connect with you what's the best way that they can do that um right now Boy, I am just all over the place, but my YouTube channel is called The Dad Bod Project, okay? Mm-hmm. Aptly named after what, what I started going through. And then eatdepletrepeat.com is, um, right now, it's just a big, long document explaining what my whole theory is behind this um, eat, deplete, repeat thing. Uh, and then I also have a, a Facebook support group for that. And then I'm also on, um, I'm also on Fast Club. Oh, okay. What's that? <laughs> Fast Club, it, it started for my uh, YouTube followers. And I mm-hmm. just, you know, felt like we needed to have a, a support group for people starting to do appetite correction protocols. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of evolved into, you know, being about a lot of different types of, of fasting. So um, awesome. it's just a support group. And that's where, you know, I have the opportunity, even though I'm just here. Just one guy feeding my kid bottles, changing their diapers and all that kind of stuff in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm actually able to kind of reach out and, and touch people in Malawi, Africa, and Liberia, and Australia, all over the world. And you're doing the same thing. And, it, right. and it's, just, you know, it's just, it feels good to help people. So right. yeah, that's, that's where awesome. I'm at. Dad Bod Project, Fast Club, and Eat, Deplete, Repeat. All right. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for being yeah. here, for telling your story, and for sharing all that. Excellent information. It was awesome. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for putting all this stuff out there and helping people. You're doing an amazing job. Well, thank you very much. Awesome.